Okay, so Pi News episode 49, and I'll just quit out of that, just to show that we're running in Twister OS. So that was Jurassic Park running in RetroPy. I was using the Mayflash Dolphin Bar, which I bought ages ago, but couldn't get it to work properly. And I figured I'd dig it out and give it another go. And this time I got it to work much quicker. Uh, I realized that my Logitech keyboard trackpad was definitely the problem because it uses a Wii remote to imitate a mouse. And if you've got another mouse connected, it doesn't work properly. That's why I was using my son's gaming keyboard just now. Anyway, let's skip into the news. So first up, I had an email. Hi Lee, I'm a long time Tinker and Raspberry Pi user. I've had my eye out on the new Raspberry Pi computers lately and we all know how hard it is to find them in stock. So I created a website to keep track which stores that have them in stock. I had it running on a Raspberry Pi for my own use but decided to publish it to the internet and moved the site to a shared hosting service. I was able to find a Raspberry Pi Zero 2 in stock just recently using this tool and I figured other people could use it too. So the website is rpilocator.com and Andre asked me to send him uh, some links for other sellers, so I sent all the UK ones from the Raspberry Pi Foundation. There's, there's about five or six different links that I've given him. And uh, if we go to the site, RPI Locator, you can see that uh, Raspberry Pi 4s are in stock at the moment, £43.50. So if I click on the link, it takes you straight to the website, and you can see that I could buy a Raspberry Pi 4 2 gig for £43.50. You can see the other models are out of stock as it's just updating itself. So let's close that one down. And you can see here, uh, it's clearly shown with a green bar, the ones that are in stock. Obviously loads of things are out of stock at the moment, but the whole thing of this is it's a very easy thing to check on a regular basis. And when you do check it, you can go straight to the site and you can buy a pie. Could come in very handy. So thanks very much for that, Andre. Next up has to be one of the coolest cases for a Raspberry Pi. Uh, this Cyberpunk case, uh, it looks like a Raspberry Pi 4 in there with an ice tower cooler. There's an OLED screen you can see on the side there as well. And uh, what looks like either glass or perspex sides on it. But the detailing on this looks just brilliant. And if we skip through the photos, uh, this one here shows the back. So you can see there's an extra couple of fans. Uh, so that will be very cool. It looks like air can pass through the design anyway, so I'm sure that will keep it super cool with a nice tower cooler. Uh, and then we've got pre-painted uh, and a little bit more detail you can see in here, a little bit closer up. Uh, I checked through some of the other posts by linksfan underscore. Finally joined PC Master Race with my mini computer with 3D printed GPU. So it's obviously not a functioning GPU, um, but, uh, but it looks like one. And if we skip onto this one as well, look at the close up of <laughs> the, what looks like a 3D graphics card. Yeah, really great work on that. I'll put links in the description if you're interested in knowing more about it. Now just an image to show you next, uh, which is from Big Tree Tech. Uh, they sent me a 5-inch screen before quite a while ago, uh, and it was a really nice screen, and I made a few videos out of it. This product's called the Raspad 5. Uh, I can't really give any more details on it at the moment, but it's being sent to me in February. Uh, you can see it's got a Compute Module 4 that attaches to it, uh, what looks like Ethernet, USB-C. Uh, that looks like mini HDMI there. I don't think it... well, I suppose it can be. Uh, and then uh, probably a couple more USB sockets here as well. So I look forward to that arriving. So next up from the Raspberry Pi Foundation, this looks amazing. Portable Studio makes and plays music on Raspberry Pi 3. Uh, so if I scroll down, I mean just the picture itself. Uh, to think that this is powered by a Raspberry Pi 3, almost a shame that it wasn't powered by a Raspberry Pi 4, but then it was started 16 months ago and the Pi 4 uh, well, availability back then. Well, I suppose it was probably better than it is now, though. It took me 16 months to build this portable studio rig. Now, if you excuse me, I'll be making music for the next 16 months at least. It just looks so cool. Um, and there are loads of posts in it. So if we go back to this bit, uh, we can see lots of details of the insides and the wiring and everything. Yeah, very impressive. I don't know what most of it does, but it looks very impressive. Unfortunate terminology here. Uh, but this is a tea bag machine, uh, and you can see it dunks tea bags for the right duration. Uh, I don't know what pie's inside it. Uh, oh, a pico. Uh, so a pie pico. Each key one to nine will steep it for that many minutes. Not that you want it to. Uh, so if you like your tea, uh, or builder's tea as we call it, uh, and you can see it from the first comment. <laughs> Uh, quite amusing. Right, so next up, something to look forward to. So Chris Edwards Restoration. Chris Edwards does the Pi Amiga builds, 
and these are a fully loaded uh, it basically emulates an Amiga uh, but gives you loads and loads of other things loads of games in it it, it just is a brilliant system and uh, version 3 is on its way so there's already a pre-alpha image if you want to try that out uh, have a look at the details on his channel from Tom's Hardware, uh, I think Jeff Geerling's also done a video on this. I'm sure I saw it come up in my feed, but I haven't watched it yet. Pi Gear Nano Compute Module for Carrier Board is the new USB King. So if you like USB, and I guess it's maybe for network attached storage or something like that, but uh, yeah, there's an awful lot on there. So it must have quite a bit of power to be able to power all those devices, starting at $201. And another one from Tom's Hardware, a strange one this time, Raspberry Pi brings nine Game Boy together as one. So this is Minecraft running on nine Game Boy screens. KGSWS is able to control multiple Game Boy LCD screens simultaneously. And there is a video on YouTube on this. Using nine individual Game Boy screens arranged in a grid formation, it uses a tenth Game Boy to load a game and play while the video outputs to all nine screens as one display. Just a crazy project. Look at the wire in there. And this one from Reddit, I built a Raspi handheld based on the Xbox controller. Uh, and there's a video with this as well. So lots of detail, I guess that's 3D printed buttons looking at the finish of it. <laughs> Look at all the wiring on the back. You don't want to be taking that on an aeroplane, do you? And I've just watched the video all the way through. And uh, if there's one Raspberry Pi video you watch today other than this one, I would make sure it's this one because the just the, the quality of this video is excellent, but also just the detail of the build. And this must have taken ages. Um, so to be, uh, it's a six minute video, uh, but there's so much in here. The whole process, uh, right from the very start. And uh, yeah, it, it is so impressive. As I won't play it because you need to see this video in its entirety. The whole designing it, comparing it to an Xbox One controller, and uh, going through the various different designs, uh, all the wiring inside it, all the soldering, all the 3D printing of the buttons is there. You can see loads of different components have been uh, printed out to give it a try. And the, the finished article just looks great. It looks like a proper console. Up. And you can see GTA uh, Vice City Stories on there. Yeah, amazing work. And it's only had 1,900 views at the moment, but it definitely deserves more. I'll put a link to this in the description. Another great story from raspberrypi.com. Uh, so Australian students built an arcade to play their own games on. And you can see here the arcade cabinet looks really, really good. Uh, you can see all the controllers and all the buttons and everything. I really like the artwork on it. And here they are putting it all together. And again, lots of details, lots of wiring. Yep, very, very impressive. And last up is a hand-controlled Atari 2600. And uh, another another weird but people have been really creative uh, at the beginning of the year, or at least the videos have come out at the beginning of the year, uh, playing Atari using your hands as motion controls. And if we scroll down through, you can see there's a Microsoft, I guess it's like a Kinect sensor uh, that senses your movements. And Combat was one of the games I had. Uh, Atari 2600 was the second console we ever owned back in the day. Super impressive. And there's all the details again, loads and loads of levels of detail. And you can see the recognition of the hand there as well. <laughs> and this bit on the hand as well looks cool with uh, what looks like a Pico there. Okay, so I hope all this helps. I hope you liked it. Thanks very much for watching. Please like and subscribe.